the last bit that we have here is a movie, a very short one, but it's the last case of naturally, uh, naturally occurring smallpox, which is Ali Mal Milan. On a quiet edge of East Africa, women from the town of Merca follow a tradition that began before Roman times. Merca is an ancient port and the chief town of the region of Lower Shabeli in Somalia, in the part of the world known as the Horn of Africa. <laughs> Villagers and nomads mingle in the traditional exchange of banter and goods. People go about their business, innocent of the danger which threatens the entire community, smallpox. This young man is a victim of one of the most devastating diseases in human history. <laughs> Ali Ma Malin, latest of over 3,000 known cases in the 1977 <laughs> epidemic in southern Somalia. It is the last region in the world where smallpox is known to exist. <laughs> to make sure, Ali's contacts must be traced and their safety assured by vaccination, and it must be done quickly. Operations begin that night. The aim, to seal off the possible outbreak that now threatens the city. 23 special teams have been assigned to cover every section of town in the emergency drive. Starting at the outskirts of the city, they methodically work their way to the center. Everyone in Merka, a town of 40,000, must be checked. The virus must not escape. The essence of a successful smallpox campaign is to quickly find outbreaks of the disease and contain them. House-to-house -house night searches proved to be the best time to find people at home. Anyone with a vaccination scar, a recent one, is safe. All traffic is halted going into town or coming out. On-the-spot vaccination for everyone guarantees that the virus will not slip through the net. Within eight days, over 20,000 people in Merka are vaccinated. Experts call this the containment technique. Well proven during years of field experience in other countries, the method isolates the virus behind a solid wall of vaccination. The international community and the World Health Organization are helping Somalia fight the epidemic not only in Merka, but throughout this vast land. Three quarters of its people are nomads scattered thinly over a huge territory. The nomads follow the rains, looking for fresh pastures for their livestock. They never stay in one place for more than two or three weeks at a time. Understandably, smallpox surveillance among these wanderers is much more difficult than establishing surveillance in settled communities. The camps shift and reform like mirages. The specific movement of nomad bands cannot be anticipated, but they do migrate in a general pattern according to the rains. The search teams start with the water holes, where the herds must pass. For the smallpox eradication team, time is precious. Every day a smallpox outbreak remains undetected means more spread, more cases, and more deaths. Thank <laughs> you. 
Like any capital, Mogadishu has a large transient population. At this time of year, Muslim pilgrims traveling to Mecca in Saudi Arabia present a particular threat and must be checked very carefully. Inadvertently, the celebration of a universal religion could start an international epidemic. Here, as in the bush and the villages, the search is mounted systematically. In every market, tea shop, water hole and school, a recognition card is shown. But case reports are steadily falling. Final victory over the epidemic is achieved through relentless attention to detail. In encounter after encounter with villager and nomad, the teams keep up the pursuit. They show the picture over and over, seeking a flash of recognition, a clue. Wanted. Smallpox reports. 200 shilling reward. News of the reward spreads quickly and it helps the searchers. In the three weeks since Ali fell ill, no more cases have been found in Merka or anywhere else in the country. WHO launched its Smallpox Zero campaign in 1967. The disease then menaced about one billion people. Step by step, it has been wiped off the face of the earth. Isolated to one country, Somalia, to one area, Merka, and to one man, Ali, who may be the last case ever. Uh, that was the last case, and I would say Somalia itself had some unusual features and beautifully documented by Stan Foster, who went down after Bangladesh to work in uh, Somalia and found that this mild case form of smallpox they had could be sustained literally for months within a fairly small nomadic group just gradually moving from person to person. But here there was another problem and that was the pilgrimage to Mecca which was coming up in November and we were running cases into September, October, I think the last case then came in October just before the major uh, movement to Mecca and uh, you're not very far away from Saudi Arabia here and many people go overland and what we could imagine the worst was to have this mild smallpox brought into Mecca and uh, with, the, with the hundreds of thousands of people there seeing this again spin out all over the world. Well, it didn't happen, <laughs> but this was not the end, and the most, one of the most difficult tasks now was over the next two years to make sure that there was no smallpox and try to persuade all of the governments that were there to maintain an act of surveillance for two more years with no cases, and this was really difficult because they were all, all of the places where we were, the last cases were occurring were those that needed personnel and needed, uh, needed re resources. And so they're ha very, very anxious to shift everything out of smallpox into other things. So it was yet two more years of uh, continual work. And uh, so there was a great group that did that as well. And at this time it was uh, Isao Rita who was directing the program from Geneva. And I had departed to become a dean. So, thank you very much. So, the saga of smallpox. Yeah.